The Abbott and Costello Show with Marilyn Maxwell, Skinny Ennis and his orchestra, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello, Costello. Hey. Come on, Costello. Hey. Tell me, what were you doing up in Beverly Hills this morning? Well, Come on. Up in Beverly Hills this what morning? were you doing up in Beverly Abbott. Hills this morning? I'm up in Beverly Hills every morning. I always stop by Hedy Lamar's house. I holler, hey! And then what? I throw the morning paper on a porch and go to my next customer. Oh. <laughs> Delivering papers at your age. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, you idiot. Why don't you get yourself a real job? Don't you want to grow up and be a failure? Do you want to be one? Oh, no. That's well, bad. Certainly it's bad. Do you want to be a fellow that spends all his time in pool rooms? Oh, no. That's bad. Uh, do you want to be a fellow that hangs around stage doors and picks up chorus girls? That's bad. Ah. <laughs> Tell me, why don't you go out and get yourself a job? Oh, I don't have to have it. My father went out and found a job this morning. You're doing what? We don't know yet. My mother don't start till tomorrow. I... <laughs> Costello, why don't you be like me? I work. I save a little money every week. And by the time I'm 65, I'll have a nice little nest egg. Abbott, by the time you're 65, you'll be too old to hatch. I... <laughs> I'm willing to go to work, Abbott. I got a great idea for a net for you and me. We'll go in the ball. Hey, now that sounds good. What is it? Well, first the curtain goes up. Right. I come out, sing and dance, tell a few jokes. Then the curtain comes down. Then the curtain goes up again. I come out, sing, dance, tell some more jokes, and then the curtain comes down again. Then I tell some wait more jokes. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where do I come in? That curtain don't work by itself. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, it's a waste of time talking to you. The only job you'd be good at for is to replace a moron. Abbott, I couldn't take the bread and butter out of your mouth. I am. <laughs> Costello, why don't you get some ambition? Get some scruples. Scruples? What do I want with Russian money? Uh, <laughs> scruples. I'm talking about scruples. Scruples give you incentive, ambition. Scruples drive you on. Oh, I got one of those. One of what? A scruple driver. A scruple driver. <laughs> my tool chest with my muckle wrench and my jackal knife. Oh, uh, <laughs> I talk, man. Please, Lou. You know, you're a shining example of that old saying, laziness is the father of all evil. Yes, and a loaf of bread... Bread is the mother of an aeroplane. Uh, wait a minute. A loaf of bread is the mother of an aeroplane? Sure, I'll prove it to you. What is a loaf of bread? Well, that's a necessity. And what's an aeroplane? Uh, an invention. Well, ain't necessity the mother of invention? Oh. <laughs> Look, Costello, why don't you get yourself a steady job? Hard work never hurt anybody. You're right, Abbott. I was just reading a story the other day that proves it. Uh, what was it called? The Three Little Pigs. It goes like this. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs, and they were oh, wait, first... Wait, what was the pig. first pig's name? His name was Inky. Uh, why did they call him Inky? Because he was always running out of the pen. Uh... <laughs> Abbott, will you please stop buttoning in and let me tell a story? Go ahead, go now, ahead. Now, keep your mouth shut. All right. Now, you go on over to the coal yard and show them what a real clinker looks like. Uh, here. <laughs> Be nice. Go ahead and tell your story. Now, the mother pig was a big, fat sow, and she raised a special kind of cabbage. Now, wait a minute, so wait a minute. Big... What kind of a cabbage could a sow raise? Ain't you never heard of sauerkraut? And the father pig worked in a foundry. What did the father pig do in a foundry? Who said that? I did, in case you ask me. Uh. He was making pig iron. Now, these pigs, these pigs lived on a farm, and right next door was a family of cats. So one day the cats... Maltese cats? Stu- yes. Now one... What'd you say? Maltese cats? Maybe you're a Maltese cats, but my ma loves cats. Ah, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> there are different kinds of cats. Maltese cats and Persian cats. Oh, now when she's satisfied, ain't she ain't even satisfied with teasing cats, she's going to poison them too? Shame on your ma! Oh, no, 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 just a minute. my poison cat. Now take it easy, please. Costello, my ma has three cats and she wouldn't hurt her feline. Have it. You just said your Maltese cats and Persian cats and that will hurt their felines. Costello, <laughs> there's absolutely no sense to this at all. Well, where there's no sense, there's no felines. Oh, never mind. <laughs> will you stop getting me mixed? All right, go ahead. Come on, continue. Okay, now, there was one little kitten in the family that was always beating up his father. Ah, uh, wait he, a minute. Now, just a minute. How could a kitten beat up his father? Because it says right there in the book that kitten was always licking his paw. That's all. <laughs> I asked you to keep your mouth shut. Go ahead. Now, this little kitten used to play with the three little pigs, and sometimes they would climb the fence into the pasture and milk the cow. Now, just a minute. And how could three little pigs and a kitten milk a cow? Well, first they would feed the cow hay. Yes. Then they would give, give the cow a lot of water, and then they would crawl underneath and drain his crankcase. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then, I bet. For the last time, keep all there. right, all right, go ahead. Now, the three little pigs were afraid of the big bad wolf. He was their enemy. So they... I they... see, the wolf was their antagonist. Yes, he, he was... He... Could I have that again? The wolf was the pig's antagonist. How could a wolf be their antagonist? This was a hero. <laughs> their antagonist was a pig. Oh, forget the whole thing. Forget about it. The 
three little pigs were afraid of the big bad wolf, so they decided to go to work and build a house. Yes, I know. they wanted to work hard and build a house That's and protect right. them from the wolves. So they went to the OPA. Uh, yes, the Office of the uh, Price Administration. No, OPA, the Oversized Pigs Association. Uh. <laughs> so the three pigs got lumber and bricks and all kinds of building materials. Now, now wait a minute, just a second. Minute. Now just a second. Where would pigs get building materials? Well, somebody must be getting them. People can't get them. <laughs> Now, the first pig built his house out of straw, and along came the wolf, and he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house down. My, that wolf, that wolf must have had a powerful breath. Yeah, he just had an Italian dinner. I... Now, and now, the third little pig built his house of bricks, and the wolf, he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, but he couldn't blow it down. And that is the moral of my story. Wait a minute, what is the moral of your story? Girls, the next time a wolf starts huffing and puffing at you, head for the nearest pile of bricks. <laughs> I made up my mind that you're going to get a job and go to work. Now, I'll find you a job if we have to walk the streets all day. Look, Abbott, there's a help wanted sign in the window. Maybe they could use me. What does the sign say? Wanted. Men or women. Full of part-time. Day or night. Dead or alive. <laughs> Apply Dr. Ugg's store. Oh, wait a minute. Where does it say Dr. Ugg's store? Uh, that's drug store. <laughs> Come on, we're going in and get you a job. Now, uh, you can use me as a reference. The last time I used you as a reference, the guy knew you. Yes? What, what did he say about me? Abbott. What's a schmo? I, uh, <laughs> never mind, let's go in this store. Come on. Oh, a high-class store. Quiet, Costello. That man over there looks like the boss. Uh, pardon me, sir. Are you the proprietor? As Gainsborough's Blue Boy said to the Esquire calendar, I ain't Whistler's mother. <laughs> Are you desirous of employment? No, I'm Costello of North Hollywood. No, no. <laughs> Shut up, you dummy. Uh, mister, could you use a bright boy like Costello? Yes, providing he's conscientious. I'm firing the boy I've got now because he wants another day off. My, when did he have his last day off? In 1937. <laughs> what does he think this is, a playground? <laughs> nice going, Costello. Uh, sir, you will never regret hiring this industrious, industrious, hard-working, ambitious young man. He's hired. Oh, yes. And, Mr. Abbott, I'd like to have you as my head salesman. What do you want, Abbott, as your head salesman? Quiet. Costello, anybody that could talk me into hiring a lazy, shiftless, fat misfit like you must be a great salesman. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Rabbit, you're now the assistant manager. Get to work, boy. Well, come on, Costello, get going. Sweep up the store, straighten out the counters, <laughs> clean out the prescription room, wash the windows, then get back at that soda fountain and stay there. And remember, I am the assistant manager. You're just the assistant manager? That's right. What a schmo the manager must be. Uh, <laughs> Look, there's a lady customer. See what she wants. Well, if it isn't Mr. Orbit. And you too, Mr. Costello. You fought little ma on you. Well, Liz, <laughs> what can we do for you? Oh, I just drooped into the droop stewer to get some horn lotion. Horn, horn lotion? lotion? Sure, Abby, you know what horn lotion is. That's the stuff you rub on your spoon when it's root. <laughs> And I'd also like some aspirin tablets and a bottle of comfort. I always use comfort when I have a cold. When I have a cool, I spray my tonsils with an atomizer and slap a mustard pooster on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must be toddling along. As we say in Spanish, la que yo mañana es split a siesta to you. And a leaky banana split in the kisser to you too. <laughs> Well, come on, customers. Yes, here I come. Come on, get going. The store is full of people. Now get busy and wait on those customers. <laughs> well, Costello, that was quite a rush. Uh, by the way, what did you sell that fat lady? She bought a big can of talcum powder. Was it scented? No, she took it right with her. I... <laughs> I want to know if it was scented. How could it be scented if she took a winner? You dummy, I'm talking about the kind of talcum powder. Was it men's? No, it was women's. <laughs> this customer was a lady. Well, lots of women like men's. So what? Lots of men's like women's. <laughs> but there are some women that wouldn't have men's. How do you like that? Those women's are getting more independent every day. What do you, what do you mean? If it wasn't for men's, where would the women's be? Oh, <laughs> well, vice versa. 
If that lady bought talcum powder, it must have been sent it. Abbott, I sold a talcum powder to the woman, and she carried it out herself. Nobody sent it. <laughs> well, well, young man, how are you making out on the job? Oh, I'm doing fine. I, I already sold a tin of talcum powder. Oh, that's wonderful. You see, Abbott, he don't care if it was sent it or the lady took it with her. <laughs> what else did you sell? Some hair tonic. Vitalis? What was that? Vitalis. You asked me to tell you, so I thought I'd tell you. <laughs> I said I sold her some hair tonic. And I said, buy talents, buy talents. If you don't want me to tell you why, yes. <laughs> All he wants to know is what kind of hair tonic it was. Just regular hair tonic. Oh. Was it scented? No, the man took... Wait a minute! <laughs> Who lets the wind for that again? Look, you idiot. It's easy to see that you've never worked in a drugstore before. No, but my uncle Artie Stebbins was a druggist. One day he fell into a barrel of mercurochrome. He couldn't wash it off, so he had to quit. Oh, what's he doing now? He stands at the depot in Albuquerque and sells Indian blankets. <laughs> Pardon me, clerk. Uh, I want to get some invisible hair nets for my wife. Okay, here you are. That will be two dollars. Are you sure these hair nets are invisible? Invisible? Brother, I've been selling them all morning. We've been out of them for two weeks. <laughs> Hey, look, Priscilla, there's Merrill Maxwell at the uh, soda fountain. See what she wants. Well, hello, Lewis. I'm glad to see you working. What do you have, Marilyn? Can I make you a nice hot fudge sundae? Oh, no, thanks, Lewis. You know, I have to watch my figure. That's silly. There's no use in both of us watching it. <laughs> you know, Lewis, I like you because you're so different. Most boys of your age think of nothing but necking. You're the studious type. Yes, I do a lot of thinking. What do you think about? Necking. <laughs> Marilyn, what can I serve you? Well, I'll take a plain dish of vanilla ice cream. And the more ice cream you put on the dish, mm -hmm. the bigger the kiss I'll give you. <laughs> Pardon me a second till I get my dark glasses. Dark glasses? Yeah, by the time I get through dishing up that vanilla ice cream, I'll be snow blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, on second thought, Lewis, I don't think I want the ice cream. You see, I just dropped in to take home a back scratcher. Wait till I get my hat. I'll go with you. Uh, <laughs> hello. Why didn't you wait on that lady at the other end of the counter? I tried to, Abbott, but the lady asked for a sundae with crushed pineapple on top, and we ain't got any. She wants to know what else we got. What will I tell her? Nuts. That's what I say, too. <laughs> but she wants to know what she can have instead of pineapple. Nuts. Tell her nuts. Abbott, you can't treat a customer like that. All the poor lady wants is something on top of a sundae, and you say nuts. That's right. Abbott, I've heard of clerks being independent, but this is ridiculous. Look, Costello, the woman wants something on top of her sundae, and you're all out of the pineapple. That's right. Then give her the raspberry. Give her the raspberry? <laughs> Abbott, I'd rather say nuts and forget the whole thing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>